Hey guys, welcome back to the final part of this mini series. Today we're gonna be finishing the sword and we're gonna be not only rigging it, but animating it and bringing it into Unreal Engine 4. So if you're watching this on Sunday, which is the day it's uh, airing, then, um, well, you're gonna get a couple of little nice extra uh, pieces of information. So yeah, let's jump into the, into the main action right here. So this is the object, this is the Momentum FPX that we have uh, exported last time. And in, in this FPX, what we're gonna do is we're gonna rig it. Now we're gonna do a very, very, very simple rig, okay? So I'm gonna go here into the rigging section. If you've never rigged before, do not worry. I'm gonna try to uh, like go through these things in the, in the best possible way. Now, if you are interested in the rigging, I must remind you that uh, we have our intro to rigging course available on all of the links down here. Um, also, before we jump here, there's a couple of things that I want to talk about. So, uh, first of all, someone asked me uh, for the alphas that we use on the sculpting section of the of the thing. Remember, you can just look for them. They're called orb brushes. Uh, if you uh, Google Gumroad orb brushes, you're gonna find this one right here. They're completely free. So just go there. Uh, Michael Vicente was the artist that uh, created them, and he's sharing them for free. So you can get those uh, right there. Uh, the second one, the second question that someone asked, what was it? Someone asked about trim shit. We're gonna talk about trim shit soon. And uh, there's also the suggestion to do a peace project to, of course, um, raise a little bit of our, our voices for the Ukraine-Russia conflict that's going on right now. We're not a political political channel. We're not gonna go into the politics. I know that it's an important event, and hopefully, if every, anyone is uh, watching either in Russia or in Ukraine, hopefully, you guys are safe and uh, you can do something to to try to bring peace to the conflict. Uh, but yeah, um, if there's any ideas on on what we could model, uh, I'm happy to hear and let them down in the comments um, down here. So yeah, uh, we're gonna grab this joint right here, Control D, and we're just gonna duplicate it. That's gonna be on the center there. Control D again, we're gonna duplicate it right here. Control D once more, we're gonna duplicate it right here and Control D once more here on the base of the sword. You can bring them on the on the top side of the sword. It depends on where you want to animate these things. Now for the little rocks, if you wanna have like bones or joints for each specific little rock, then uh, we can do that as well. I think I'm only gonna add two rocks, which I think are the, are the big ones. So it's uh, this one right here. Actually, let's do three rocks. This one right here and this little one right here. Cool. So I, I don't really want to move this rock right here because it's an ugly rock. Uh, so we're only going to be moving those three rocks. Very important. Naming conventions are super, super important for any rigging thing. So this one right here is going to be called the root underscore root underscore GNT. There we go. This one right here is going to be called emblem underscore GNT. The root, of course, is also going to be like the... Um, like the main bone of the of the whole thing, of course. Uh, this is going to be called uh, left spike GNT. This is going to be right spike GNT, and we're going to do something funny with this one. We're actually going to rotate the joints so they're pointing in the direction of the spikes. This is called the local rotation axis. I'm not going to get too much in in depth on this thing, and we're just going to phrase the transformation so the rotation should be clean. Uh, everything else, uh, like this is going to be blade joint. Let's call this stone A joint. Probably like a capital A so that we know which one it is. And that's going to be stone, uh, stone B joint. And finally stone C joint. There we go. Now all of these three stones are going to be parented with P to the blade. So wherever the blade goes, those little stones are going to go with it. Um, the blade is going to be parented to the uh, main handle, so to the root bone, as well as everything else. So just grab them and hit P. Uh, like you grab the elements and then you grab the root and then you hit P and that's going to parent them. So this is like the, the hierarchy that we're going to have. Root, blade, and then the stones, and then root, and emblems, and the spikes. Um, if you want to take a look here, you can press, uh, is it alt one? Alt, alt two. Alt two has the geometry. This is like the, the joint tree that we're going to be using for our a specific element. There we go. Now, here's the thing. I'm actually not going to uh, add control controllers to this thing. We're going to animate them as, as they are right now. Uh, just to try to get this thing moving and, and make sure that this is not like super long video. The proper way to do it, of course, is to add controllers to the thing so that animators have an easier time. But here's the kicker. You don't need controllers for uh, or to export this into Epic Games or into Unreal because when you export things, you only export the bone information and the skin information and of the model, of course. So curves, constraints, 
uh, locators, uh, set driven keys, like all of those crazy things that we do in rigging, they do not get exported. The only thing that gets exported is where's the bone and how is that bone influencing the geometry? That's it. So yeah, that's why technically you could animate without controllers and you would still be perfectly fine for games and even for like a video. So sometimes when you know, we're in a time crunch here in the studio and there are simple objects like this ones, just throw a bone in there, uh, skin it real quick and then <laughs> animate it and that's it. So yeah, the only thing is we're gonna have to be selecting the bones over here, but shouldn't be that much of a problem. Now, uh, big question that people ask, should we combine all of the geometry into a single element? Yes, if possible, try to combine everything into a single mesh because that will only give you one skin cluster and that's lighter for the engine. Yes, you can export an object like a character, for instance, with multiple uh, skin clusters. It, it works, it's fine, but it's heavier on the performance size because you need to think about all of the different skin clusters. If you only have one single geometry like this one right here, it makes things a lot, a lot easier. So that's why normally you're going to see all the geometry combined into a single object. So we grab everything here. We grab the, uh, um, the sword right here and we're going to go into rigging, skin and bind skin. On the options, select the joints. In this case, it's all of them. Closest distance is fine. Uh, max influence, uh, it really doesn't matter because we're gonna be painting the weights, but I'm just gonna hit five and just hit apply. So now, as you can see, the bones are uh, actually moving pieces. So if I were to grab this bone and move it around, as you can see, it's gonna move pieces of the object, but we want to move only specific parts. Here's where the, uh, I would say one of the tricky parts of rigging comes into place. Rigging is actually made out of three uh, specific parts. It's the creation of the bones, that's very important, the skeleton, which we already did, it's the skinning, which we're about to do, and it's the controller. So I think, uh, I like to think about rigging in those three general areas. The controller creation, the skeleton creation, and the skin creation. And when you combine all of this, those three, you get uh, a proper rig. So yeah, uh, in this case, what I'm going to do is very simple. I'm just going to grab this guy right here, and I'm going to go into skin, paint skin weights. And this will allow me, as the name implies, to paint the weights that each bone is like modifying. There's several ways to do it. You can start with the biggest piece first and then go to the smallest pieces. You can start with small piece first and then go to the bigger pieces. I'm going to start with the big pieces first and then we're going to go to the smallest ones. So I'm going to show you here a quick trick in how you can make sure you have clean uh, weights, especially for objects like this that are solid. For characters where you're going to have like bendy stuff, uh, it's a little bit different. But for this one, if we go to the root joint, we can just go to the option, which is a replace. And we're just going to flood everything to one. So now the only joint that's moving things, it's the root joint. If I select the root joint, everything moves. But if I select any other joint, nothing moves. Now, why is this important? Because now we can, again, uh, grab the uh, geometry, go into paint selection tool. We can go to the blade, for instance, and I can just go to the select option, double click this, which is going to select all of the island, everything that's uh, like stick together into a single mesh, go back to paint and flood this into one. And the funny thing is a vertex cannot have like you can know the vertex can only have a value, a total value of one. So if the if the root joint used to have the value of one, I'm pretty much saying, hey, forget about that value and give it to me because this vertex can only move when I move. OK, so so a vertex cannot share more than a value of one and it divides that value between different pieces. In this case, we want each specific bone to have the total value. So oh, I just hit the microphone. I changed the microphone position, by the way. I think the audio is a little bit clearer, cleaner. Um, and uh, it doesn't look that bad on the frame, right? I was thinking about having it like here even. But I think the there should be should be fairly good. So let's go to stone A. So stone is still this little one right here. So again, we go to select, double click those guys right there, go back to paint. And we're going to hit flood. So now the stone A joint is uh, influencing those vertices in, its, in their totality. We're gonna go to stone B, do the same thing, go into selection, double click, go back to paint and flood. Then we're gonna go into stone C, selection, double click, paint and flood. Then we're gonna go to the emblem, which is this one right here, select, double click, paint and flood. We're gonna go to the spike, left spike, which is this one over here, select, Double click, paint, and flood. And finally, right spike, select, double click, paint, and flood. Now, if we go through the, the bones, root, blade, stone A, stone B, stone C, and blend, spike, and spike, you're going to see that everything has uh, the like the proper the proper animation. And the way you're going to test this, if, if, if you grab one of these guys and move it around, all of the geometries should be moving from that specific point. 
And that's it. That's the that's the what's the word? That's the blade. That's the that's the rigging part of things. Now again, as I mentioned, you can add a controller and create like your controller setup right here. But this, what you're seeing right here, is more than enough to bring it into Unreal. And uh, as I say that, I just finished downloading uh, the newest preview for Unreal Engine 5. So I'm gonna show you real quick how to create a project. We don't have any project right now. Let's just allow this. And um, they just released preview one like two or three days ago. Uh, it's it's like relatively recent. Preview one is, let's call it like the official release. It's not the official official release, but it's a little bit better than the early access that they uh, that they had a couple of months ago. Uh, it should be a little bit more stable. It should have a couple of more features. And uh, yeah, after this, after this, we're probably gonna go to five point zero point one, and that's probably gonna be like the the actual release. Um, but yeah, uh, you can download it for free on the Epic Games Marketplace. So here, I'm gonna go games, and we're gonna create a third person game. Uh, it's going to be desktop, maximum quality. We're going to call this next to it. It's going to be our project. So if uh, if you want to see a little bit more about Unreal, let me know and we can create more stuff. Uh, let's uh, select where we're going to create this. Uh, I think we're going to go to 2022 now. Because I don't think we have one. Let's create a new one, new folder. Let's call this next to live. I know we're not like live live, but... Uh, that's the way I know that this is for like the, the YouTube channel. Uh, and let's call this next to it, uh, sandbox. So that we can create and do stuff here. I think we can use underscore, can we? Yeah, there we go. Uh, so yeah, let's we'll create the project there. And uh, it's gonna launch the engine. The engine is relatively easy it's very similar to a lot of the engines that we normally use we don't need vr right now so i'm just turning it off and uh yeah it's a it's a fun it's a fun little piece there we go so uh wow they changed things around interesting interesting so yeah you guys are seeing and i'm seeing it as well the first uh preview of the newest uh, element the the third place third person thing was always like super super obvious uh, now it's not, so there we go. Well, it's not that it's not obvious. It's a little bit different. So this is the character. This is the character we're going to be using. And uh, unfortunately, I do not have the, um, like, I couldn't find any animations for, like, sword swinging and stuff. There were a couple of gun swingings. I'll, I'll keep on looking. If I find something, we'll, we'll uh, attach it there. Oh, even the gravity is a little bit better. It used to be, like, very floaty. Now it's uh, looks a little bit nicer. So, yeah, that's Unreal. So let's start working on the elements. Uh, I like to use my content drawer over the here. This is the, the place where we're gonna be like importing stuff, and I'm gonna e I'm gonna create a new uh, new folder. Here we go. Let's call this assets. And then here we're gonna create a new folder. Always keep yourself organized. Let's call this momentum sword. Now we're gonna go here. I'm gonna select the sword. Very important. I'm gonna assign a new material before we leave Maya, and I'm gonna call this new material here on the number three. I'm gonna call this M Momentum. So that way I know that this is the material. You're gonna grab all of the joints and the sword and you're gonna export this as an FBX, okay? So let's go here, Assets, Momentum, and I'm just gonna call this, I mean, we already have the Momentum FBX, so let's use the same one, it's fine. We are not exporting any animation just yet, this is gonna be the base layer. So I'm gonna export the selection and hit yes. Now, uh, over here, let's go here, right click, we're gonna import to this folder. We're gonna go to our folder here and we're gonna import a momentum. There we go. So as you can see, we're gonna get this. First, it's gonna tell us, do you wanna import this to a specific skeleton? We do not. So we wanted to create a new skeleton and, and that's why we're telling it it is a skeletal mesh. Import the mesh as well. We want the skeleton and the mesh. Leave everything else the same. We're not importing anything else. We're not changing anything on the FBX file. So we're just gonna hit import. One thing that might be a little bit off here is that the little thing might be a little bit too big. So just be mindful there. And as you can see, here's a skeleton, here's a physics asset, and here's the actual sword. We also have the material, which is ready to be built. Right click, and we're gonna uh, import more things. And of course, we wanna import the base color, the emissive, the, we don't need the metalness, we don't have any metalness, so that's fine. And the normal map and the roughness. Hit okay, and there we go. Now, the roughness is a black and white color. Unfortunately, by default, anytime you import a texture inside of Unreal, it linearizes it. Uh, it's a little process that it adds to make sure that the display is working properly. But for black and white images, we do not want that. So I'm gonna select this option right here. I just like went here to the content browser, or content drawer it's called now. And on the content drawer, is there a way to keep this open? I kinda like to keep it open. Let's dock it. There we go. 
So on the content browser, now it's the content browser. That's really weird. Um, on the content browser, I am gonna double click the image, which sends me here to the to the properties, and I'm just gonna deselect the sRGB. So now I'm telling this that this is a linear image. So white should be white and black should be white. When this is linearized, or when you add this sRGB curve to it, it's it's uh, it's not linear. It's, it's it creates like a little bit of a post processing. It changes the values of the colors, and you might get a different result. If you wanna make sure it looks exactly the same as it looked on the on substance, you want to turn that off for the black and white images, which in this case is the roughness, okay? So now I am going to double click the material, and this is the material editor, very similar to a hypershade, and it's just a matter of grabbing all of the textures here and importing them into the scene. So color, the RGB of the color goes into the base color, the RGB of the emissive goes into the emissive color, the normal map goes into the normal map, and this one, which is the roughness, of course, goes into the roughness. That's it. No, and this is not rocket science, right? So you just plug in the elements where they're supposed to be going. You save this material, and uh, once this thing is saved, uh, it since it's automatically assigned to the sword, this sword will have its proper material. Would you want to check the sword? Just double click here, and this is our sword right here. Whoop! There we go. I think it's a little bit small, so we're gonna we're gonna see how this works uh, very very soon. So yeah, now what we want to do, of course, is we want to play the game when we hit play here to simulate. And I want the character to have the sword in one of the hands. Now, as you can see, uh, none of the hands are like actually holding something. The ideal thing would be for the hands to be like, of course, holding. When it runs, it does seem like he's holding uh, something with the with the left hand. Uh, but unfortunately, yeah, it's not it's not working as nicely as we would expect. No problems. So where is that guy? We, we don't have anything here, right? Like if we if I take a look at the outliner, there's no uh, third person character. That guy is called a third person character. And the reason I'm suspecting there's no third person character that used to be on older versions is because now uh, when you play, it automatically imports the third person character, which is down here. So, oh, actually my bad. My camera is, oh, this is going to be a problem. Let me, let's go over here, I think. There we go. So just to change in place for now. So yeah, so here on the content browser, you're gonna find the third person character. And on the blueprints, here's the blueprint, a third person character. So here, uh, if you've never seen Unreal before, this might be a little bit like overwhelming, but don't worry. Here on the viewport, this is like what's actually being created, which is the mesh, the capsule, the camera, everything. The event graph holds all of the actions that we normally have with the character. And um, here on the viewport is where we're gonna be uh, like changing elements or, or changing the, the way these things work. So um, let me just remember, we're going to create here. I mean, there, there's a couple of ways to, to, to make this thing work. I think the easiest way, uh, we do need to do, do a little bit of programming to, to make sure this works uh, because we need to attach the, um, what's the word, the, the sword to the character. So I'm going to go to the band graph. And uh, again, as I mentioned, I'm going to be using a little bit of code. So if you are unfamiliar with uh, visual scripting or, or this like blueprinting thing, try to follow along if you're following the exercise. If not, if not just enjoy the magics of uh, computer science. So I'm just going to click here, uh, tap and uh, type a begin play, event begin play. So when the uh, event or when the when the game begins, I want something to happen, right? And or actually not what the game begins. When this character is born into the game, when this character enters play, something's gonna happen. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say attach actor to component, okay? So I'm gonna attach an actor to a component. Now, what's gonna be the actor? Well, I need to get the actor first. And to do that, I need to go back here to our assets, to the momentum sword, and I need to create an actor. So I'm gonna right click, add a blueprint class, I'm gonna create a, an actor. It's gonna be called BP Momentum because it's the blueprint for the momentum sword. And here I'm gonna add a an, a component. It's gonna be in a skeletal mesh component. Let's call this momentum, which is gonna be the sword. And on the skeletal mesh, I'm gonna add momentum. So there we go. As you can see, that's gonna add the sword into my uh, element. Now here I'm gonna do a little bit of a, of cheating. I'm gonna go into the viewport of the third person character. And I'm gonna add momentum here as well. So I'm gonna add another skeletal mesh. And I'm gonna add the sword. And the reason I wanna do this is I wanna see how big the sword is. As you can see, it's really, really small. So I'm guessing it would need to be about there. I think that's a that's a good size for the for the sword. So the scale of the sword, is, as you can see, or the ideal scale of the sword should be about 3.5. I'm, I'm gonna say 3.5. So on this one right here, I'm gonna change the initial scale of this actor to 3.5. There we go. 
So now this actor, which is the, the main like uh, sword actor, is going to be um, 3.5 in scale. Now we're going to go back to this guy. And since we already have this actor we're compiling, now we can call this actor. So who am I going to call? Well, I'm going to use something called get actors of class. And I'm going to grab the momentum. Actually, no, we can just... Which we, I'm going to say a spawn actor of class from class. So when the game begins or when this guy enters the, the, the world, I'm going to spawn an actor. What actor? Well, of course, momentum. I'm going to create a momentum actor. Where am I going to spawn it? Well, right now we can just grab, for instance, the capsule component. And I'm going to say uh, world location so get world location or uh can we get the transform get yeah, transform get relative transfer there we go so wherever the capsule is that's where the where the sword is going to be a uh, spawn and once we spawn the sword we're going to attach the sword okay so we're going to attach this guy to the mesh actor component but not only are we going to attach it we're going to attach it to specific point so if we go to the viewport and we select the mesh component, we can go to the object here. And right now, if we take a look at the skeleton, we should have something called hand, okay? Like hand left, okay? So what we can do is I can right click uh, hand left. And I'm gonna say add a socket. And that socket, as you can see, is gonna be called hand L socket. Let's change the name and let's call this momentum socket, okay? Control A, Control C. And I'm going to move the socket a little bit forward so that it's on the palm of the hand. But it's a, it's a, it's parented to the wrist. So wherever the wrist move, like if I grab, uh, again, the wrist here and I move it like this, you're going to see that the momentum socket is there. Okay, so that's important. We're, we're, it's kind of like creating another little uh, joint, but that joint has no influence on the mesh. It's just like a, like a locator. It's a position, okay? So it's called momentum socket. I'm going to control C this guy. And if we go back to the third person character, to the band graph, I can actually type the name right there. And compile and it knows that it needs to attach this component there technically this should work let's give it a go so um, again when the game begins i'm going to spawn an actor which is going to be this actor right here the sword the momentum sword and i'm going to attach that sword to the hand to the momentum socket hand of this component right here everything again seems to be <laughs> in logic it works now let's say if in practice it works and uh, no it's not working now let's just take a quick look there we go. See that? There's something there. There's something like moving over there. So the sword is somewhere, but it's not where I want this to be. So let's go back to the, to the third person character. And let's change a couple of things. So for instance, location, I'm going to say snap to target. Rotation, I'm going to say snap to target. And scale, I'm going to see keep, keep relative. I'm gonna, I want to keep the, the, the scales the same. So now let's keep this E go. And there we go. So cool. The sword is now following the hand, as you can see. Uh, but it's not like properly located. The first thing I'm noticing is, of course, this thing is uh, pointing. Uh, whoop, let me, I'm going to eject here. There we go. So the game keeps running, but I can see it. So I can see that the, that the sword is uh, like the, the location is a little bit too, too close to the surface. So we need to bring it closer to, to the, like the palm of the hand. And of course, we need to rotate the, the whole thing so that it's pointing the other way. So that's why we created this blueprint, because instead of going all the way back to Maya and changing things, we're going to change things here on the blueprint. So on the blueprint, I'm going to select this guy, or rotate this guy around like this. And then on the mannequin, I'm going to bring that momentum point down. Save here, compile that, and let's give this another go. And there we go. So now it is looking better. I think it's a little bit too high still. Let's, uh, again, let's, oh, let's eject. There we go. So you can see there the, the connection on the hand. It's a little bit high, so we can bring it a little bit lower. Uh, but the rotation and everything now is, is working properly. As you can see, this is, this is looking quite, quite nice. So let's go to the, this mannequin right here. Let's bring it down a little bit more, just right about there. Uh, now, technically, technically, we could rotate this out, like the socket, because remember, the sword is copying the socket's like rotation. So if we rotate this out a little bit, when we spawn the sword, it should be pointing a little bit like further out. There we go. 
and now he won't cut himself. That's it. That's how you get a weapon into the game. Now, of course, doing all of the like programming to make sure that the sword uh, um, does damage and all that stuff, that's that's a whole nother story. That's a whole, whole nother story. I do know how to do a couple of simple things, but I'm not a programmer. I'm not a game designer. I'm a game artist. So there's one more thing that we need to do, and we're almost there. Uh, and that's the animation. Wouldn't it be cool if we could animate this like a small little cycle where the things kind of like open and close all the time? Like the, the, yeah, just a little cycle going on the sword. And we can do it very easily. That's why we rig it. Otherwise, like we, we could have exported the geometry and, and have it on the hand. Uh, if, the, if the sword's not going to move, you can do that and, and you're completely fine. But I do want to make this thing move. So we're going to go to frame one. I'm going to select all the joints. So select all by type joints. Probably except the root joint. I don't want to animate the root joint. I'm going to hit S. And let's say 120 frames. I think that's a, that's a fair number. So 120 frames, and we're going to hit S again. So so everything is going to return to normal after 120 uh, frames. Now, um, at frame 60 is where we're going to have all of the changes. So this guy right here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into object movement, and I want to push this thing up, like about there. And I want to push this thing up, like about there. So what's going to happen is these guys are going to like push up, and then push down, okay? So they're just gonna be like up and down, up and down. And this thing, I would like to keep spinning, but I would like it to spin fast, okay? So I want this to be like doing like double spins. So that means that in the, in the frame 120, this thing is gonna be rotating 720 degrees, okay? It's the same position, so you're not gonna see a difference, but when we play this, that thing is gonna be rotating again 720 uh, 20 times. Now, it has a slow in and a slow out, I don't want that, so I'm gonna select the bone, Go into Windows, Animation Editors, Graph Editor, select the rotation curve and linearize it so that it's a constant speed. So constant speed, this thing is just going to be like rotating around again all the time. And um, for the blade, for the blade, I think I just want to move the blade up and down as well, just a little bit. Very, very solid. Like I, I don't want this thing to go like super, super high. But what I want to do is, of course, I want to move the little stones like again up and like out and about like this. Well, let's add a little bit of, uh, of depth to the thing. So let's like push one to the front, one to the side, one to the front like that. And this is the animation that we're gonna have. There we go. So simple animation, of course we can make this better, but again, it is already getting a little bit long and I just wanna keep it basic. Just a very, very simple animation uh, that's gonna make things look cool. So the question is, how do we bring this into Unreal now? Super simple. You just grab the bones. Now we don't need the geometry. We already exported the geometry, right? So we only need the bones because the bones have the information that we're uh, getting. Like, where are the bones locating? And I'm going to change, uh, I'm going to export this with another name. I'm going to call this Momentum Idle, which is the idle animation. And we need to select the animation option and stop this at the frame 119. I'm going to give an extra point to whoever can guess how or why we're stopping it at 119. And of course, uh, the answer is because frame 1 and frame 120 is the same. So if we export that last frame as well, we're going to have like a little bit of a, of a stop. Like the animation is going to run, it's going to like suddenly stop a little bit and then continue going. And we don't want that. So this will make sure that this is a cycle. So this frame then goes to 119 and then it goes back. Okay. And just export the selection. Um, now we go back into Unreal. Here, let's import another asset, and we're going to import the momentum idle. And you're going to see that it will immediately identify that, hey, you're importing something, and I already know that you have the skeleton for that thing. It's the momentum skeleton, right? It's the sword skeleton. Yes. So we don't need to create a new skeleton because we already have the previous skeleton. And in this case, I just want to export the exported time and hit uh, import all. So as you can see, it's just one little thing that we're going to importing, which is this one, the momentum idle. And if you double click, it's the animation. It's the animation. It's the, the same animation that we did. It's now playing here inside uh, Unreal. And of course, it's looping because it's only 119 frames uh, long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the to the uh, little uh, blueprint that we did, the actual blueprint. And on the skeletal mesh, on the animation, I'm going to select an animation asset. And the animation asset is going to be the momentum idle. And we're going to keep it at looping. So now the sword is going to be animated all the time. We compiled this thing, and congratulations if you made it this far into the video. Well, you're now seeing um, the, oops, let's escape. I'm going to go here to the camera, lower the speed to like a two so that we can 
see it a little clearer. Now you're seeing the sword attached to the hand of her character, animated, textured, sculpted, model, ready to apologize, everything. Everything. Like we, we've pretty much completed the whole pipeline for an asset inside of a game. Uh, so now, uh, again, as I mentioned, the next power would be to, to calibrate this so that whenever the character presses a button or something, he makes a swing. Uh, and if the hitbox is active, he damages the enemy. Again, a lot, a lot of things that we can do, but uh, this is this is the beginning of them. Oh, that's a nice physics asset. And yeah, there we go, guys. Hopefully you guys like the series. Uh, I think it was a really fun series, right? We, we've gotten a very nice response. Uh, we thank everyone for all of the support. Remember, we get bigger and we get better by uh, having your support and uh, your promotion. So all the likes, all the shares, all the... Um, what else? Subscribes that you can give us, guys. That would be amazing. Uh, we can keep the channel growing. We can keep creating more and more fun content. Uh, that's it for now. And uh, yeah, I'll be back tomorrow, guys. I'm, I'm still not decided what I'm going to uh, share it with you tomorrow. So if there are any ideas or things that you guys want me to talk about, leave them in the comments and I'll be happy to take a look. Have a good uh, Sunday, my friends, and I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye-bye.